So what were the biggest news coming out of this reshuffle? Yeah, it was really uh, uh, in uh, Stephen Ahrens, our colleague in Germany, had broken a lot of this news even before it's kind of the fuller picture had come out. One of the surprising moves that we had seen is the COO, Frank Kunke, is uh, planning to leave the company as part of this revamp. And remember, this revamp is one of the biggest since selling has taken over. The reason it was interesting to see Frank Kunke leave is because he was really a confidant to Christian Selling. He worked with him in Japan. Uh, he had the uh, nickname Frank the Tank because of how rigorous he was in this cost-cutting effort and improving the controls for Deutsche Bank. So, you know, he was somebody who was really critical in the last couple of years, but it is a new era for Deutsche Bank. The other major, major move is Fabrizio Campelli, who was, you know, he has a number of roles, including uh, with the wealth management arm of Deutsche Bank. But the reason his move is interesting is because he's going to be leading the investment bank and the corporate banking unit, a huge part of, turn of the turnaround story here. And it's a job that Christian Selling himself is separating from his role as CEO so that it can be um, more in the hands of somebody else who can oversee it, watch it, and really watch the two deputies build up and be competitive in the businesses of trading and investment banking. So, Shanali, of course, this is meant to cover kind of renewed, raise the focus on profitability. What other restructuring uh, means, I suppose, do we expect to see, given that we've already had so many job cuts at Deutsche? Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, the idea of focusing on profitability, there's two sides to that coin, right? And in the last couple of years, we've seen a lot of restructuring, reshaping them, really get rid of some non-core assets there. They uh, really, as you said, cost cut, got rid of divisions. Uh, most notably today, a lot of that prime brokerage business that helped them not really get caught up in this debacle that had to deal with this, um, you know, set of margin calls on Wall Street. So, you know, it's a win for Deutsche Bank to, to kind of be away from um, the worst of it there. But, you know, that, that second part of profitability is growing that revenue, that top line. Deutsche Bank's fixed income business is one of the biggest on Wall Street, right? And, and there's some place that you can see them really compete with the big U.S. investment banks. And in the U.S. as well, they're really known for their business of helping firms raise debt, um, working with private equity firms, especially in leveraged loan markets that are, have been coming back and are expected to come back in a much bigger way. It's about execution, watching them do their job to win deals and become much more competitive on a global scale again. And Chanali, of course, uh, we managed to see Deutsche significantly de-risking its exposure to uh, Achegos Capital Management without incurring any loss. Is this a systemic concern across the Wall Street banks or the, some of the smaller, perhaps, regional lenders in terms of the leverage pressures and access to liquidity, liquidity that we see arising as, as a broad theme from this episode? It's a great question because systemic is a scary word on Wall Street these days, right? Nobody wants to call something <laughs> systemic unless it's going to bring the whole system down. And really, that's not what we're seeing in this instance. We're seeing a major amount of pressure on some firms, Nomura, on Credit Suisse. And we're still calculating how much that will be there yet to disclose a lot to investors. But with beyond that, it is pretty contained to a number of specific equities, which is giving a lot of the hedge fund community some relief and a lot of the banking community some relief.